This week's story is from Chris Whitehouse, who found something strange when visiting York with his paranormal investigation team that hasn't stopped following them. Hello, my name is Chris Whitehouse, and I'm in the team Whitehouse Investigations. I've investigated with Yvette three or four times, and with more sort of experience. She and the team signed my Ouija board, and Yvette and I got talking about copper wire on the glass on a Ouija board, so you don't have to put your finger on the glass, you just hold the wire instead, which is obviously much more intriguing, since you're not actually touching it. And I wanted to tell you about a case when we went to York, Stonegate area, in a B&B. The team went for two nights, and I only arrived on the second night. First night, the team got in touch with around five spirits in the building, knowing that there was a sixth mysterious one who wouldn't seem to come through, but they were all warned about him. And on the second night when I came, we got in touch with this character called Sam, who had had an illicit baby with the nanny from the night before, uh, and I think he killed the baby. Sam wanted uh, to get at us because we'd ended up moving over the lady who we'd had a kid with, and she was complaining of him always persecuting her, having to go hunting her down. So we crossed her over, and that kind of infuriated Sam. Uh, I ended up trying to do a banishing ritual, and that didn't work. And then Sam was just really angry and wanted to hurt us in our sleep on the second night. So this was like the first location that we felt we were in too deep and we actually had to leave and not investigate the second night. But that wasn't the end of the story. We went away to locations closer to home and opened up to just ask for advice from other spirits how we could deal with this Sam character. And ever since that, Sam has actually come through whenever we will open up a Ouija board uh, and he proves it's him. The activity is just beyond anything other spirits that we've ever had. He's very strong. In fact, other spirits have said that he's now inhuman because there have been rituals done to amplify his power and things like that. But yeah, the, the fascinating thing that almost like a mobile phone, you pick up the receiver no matter where you are and Sam just finds you, hunts you down by whatever signal you open. We still haven't been back to his York location, but he's threatening to to hurt us and get payback when we do. But it's just interesting that he's always around when we investigate, which I didn't think was possible. I thought you had to be at a location to contact those spirits, but he just seems to go above and beyond to find us wherever we, we are. And I just thought that was really interesting. Chris mentioned about copper wire on a glass when you're using a Ouija board. Well, I wanted to come up with some sort of invention that would actually prove that it is spirit moving the glass rather than micromuscular movement that we would make uh, using our fingers when we touch the glass. So I thought, right, okay, let's take the glass, let's drill um, some holes into the top of the glass and out of those holes, we attach some copper wire. The copper wire is then bent upwards and in a huge arc and then comes down to attach, be attached uh, to the Ouija board. And then where the uh, the wire is flattened on the board, you actually put your fingers on that, not on the glass. So in fact, the only thing that's connected to you and to the glass is the copper wire. And the reason why you use copper wire is because copper is supposed to be a fantastic conductor of electricity and of energy. And I got the idea from when the Victorians were very much into seancing, a lot of them would actually sit holding copper wire and the copper wire would go from person to person and be passed around in a big circle. So you'd all hold this big circle of copper wire. Well, we did this experiment and it was absolutely fantastic to me because the glass moved on its own. It was fabulous. It only moved a little bit, but it did move on its own when prompted and when asked. So Chris and I were talking at length about this way of, of communicating and using copper wire and, and how positive uh, it, uh, of an experiment it was uh, and how we should use more of it. 
I think spirits, Chris, um, will only move on when they really want to. And in a lot of cases, they often need help from a guide, uh, from somebody on the other side to help them. So you've got somebody here on this plane and then somebody on the other plane and working together to sort of push that that spirit and and and, and let them know that it's nothing to be scared of. But as I say, that they've they've got to really want to to move on. And we had something similar happen to us. I don't know if you remember watching um, uh, some of the Most Haunted Lives, but there was a spate where we got a, a, a spirit come through and each time he would spell out his name, Jake, and then he would say that he was going to kill me and 666 and he is the devil himself. And that every time we opened a Ouija board, Jake would come through and Jake would be aggressive and Jake would threaten. And at the beginning, I was really frightened of it and used to I used to have trouble sleeping, especially if I was on my own uh, in the house, because I think, oh, what if Jake's followed me? What if, what if he has? But eventually he disappeared uh, and went away. And I think a lot of negative entities can come through and almost they delight in frightening you. They delight in scaring you. So I also think you should tell this this uh, spirit that you've got that's seemingly following you, tell him to bog off and do one and eventually he will go away. I think if you give them too much credit, um, some of these playful spirits will play on that a little bit. Um, so, yeah, be strong and, and, and tell them to go away and keep using the copper wire, Chris. Thanks so much for getting in touch. 